The adventure continues. Let's go. So Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is the second installment of the Harry Potter film franchise and as y'all can imagine is adapted from well Harry Potter the Chamber of Secrets Harry Potter who is once again portrayed by Daniel Radcliffe is visited by Dobby the house elf who warns him that he must not return to Hogwarts for a second year as if he does return he could be in for a very to say the least a terrible situation that's an underestimate. Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger return to Hogwarts for their second year and Harry Potter soon learns why Dobby warned about return as not only are students turning up petrified throughout the entire year, threatening messages and blood are being put on the walls of the school, the Chamber of Secrets has been reopened, the era of Slytherin just might be coming back, but worst of all, because of everything happening, Hogwarts just might close for good. Alrighty guys, so let's get into Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Excellent! Chamber of Secrets is a movie that I have rewatched a couple of times ever since I saw it in the theater, but as you guys can imagine, in doing these reviews, I wanted to see how this film holds up many years later, and guys, I'm really happy to say that Chamber of Secrets not only holds up beautifully, but it is a really good, if not a nearly great sequel to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. All of the performances here are still fantastic, and the newcomers and this movie give great performances here, guys. Whether it's the returning people like Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Rupert Grint as Ronald Reasley, not to mention it as well, Emma's, I almost said Emma Stone. <laughs> Emma Watts as Hermione Granger, also Richard Harris as Dumbledore, Maggie Smith as Professor McGonagall, also Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy, Alan Rickman as Snaver... I almost said Snaverus, and I meant to say Severus Snape, but I have to spend the majority of the time when it comes down to the performances with the three new cast of this movie. Kenneth Branagh in this movie as Gedroy Lockhart, I thought was a brilliant performance as a guy that you think, and he does a good job by the way, impressing and surprising you, but as time goes along, you can slowly start to see that Basically, if you go in like, you didn't really do the stuff fall, you're just, you're full of shit, aren't you? He's charismatic, he is just brilliant. Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy, brilliant. A brilliant performance, and he is a guy that just screams, you know, dickhead. Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy is brilliant, and he's just a great actor, period. Of course, the last person I must mention, I can't remember who portrays this character, but I'll put his name right here. The person who does portray Dobby the House Elf. Dobby the House Elf is such a wonderful character. One of my favorite sequences in the entire film is, of course, when he saves Harry Potter because if you've seen the film, you all know that Lucius tried to kill Harry on school grounds. It's really cool to see how his character evolves, and especially when you see him in Well, Death Elves Part 1, to which Stay tuned for that, it's gonna be later on there, but still, the person who portrays him did such a wonderful job. Besides Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets being a great fantasy adventure film, in between everything, Chamber of Secrets is actually a really good and a solid whodunit movie. The first time I saw this movie, I couldn't have told you that, well, spoiler for those who haven't seen the movie, I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, guys, Please check it out along with the other Harry Potter films. There will be some spoilers. Now, I should have said that earlier on the video, and I do apologize, but there will be some spoilers in this video for Chamber of Secrets, so please be warned if you haven't seen it, but just go watch it. But anyways, when it was revealed who actually opened the Chamber of Secrets and who was the one writing down all the messages, I couldn't have told you that it was Jeannie Weasley. I mean, I would have never expected that, nor the whole reveal of the witch. I do want to get to that later on. I absolutely love the whole whodunit element, the whole mystery element, keeping everybody on the edge of their toes, like who's the heir of Slytherin? Why does Harry Potter speak parcel tongue? The whole thing I thought was absolutely brilliant. And also, what the hell is going on with the petrifications? Like, why are people being petrified? What the hell is a Basilisk, for God's sake. And speaking of which, guys, another thing that I absolutely love about Chamber of Secrets is the whole expansion of lore of not only Hogwarts, 
but it's the wizarding world as a whole the lore the mysteries and when you first see the chamber secrets by the way and I just do want to pause really quick. I'm coming out very discombobulated, but I'm just very excited to talk about this movie with you all. And seeing that door, I thought was so cool and melee. One of my favorite sequences in the entire film is when Harry does open the door. That whole thing is such a cool reveal. You're essentially getting more of the same that you got in Sorcerer's Stone, but you're getting a lot more lore added into this movie. But really, as a lore person, I absolutely love the expansion of Hogwarts and just the overall wizarding world in this movie. Gotta talk about the cinematography because, oh my word, the cinematography in Chamber of Secrets is gorgeous. And also, I did recently find out that Roger Pratt, who shot this film, did shoot Goblet of Fire. So, again, stay tuned for that video. Roger Pratt's cinematography for Chamber of Secrets is more than anything else an expansion addition to the work that John Seal did for Sorcerer's Stone. The color palette, the golden storybook that Christopher Columbus opened up in this movie is continued out even more so. More than anything else, one of the things I love about the cinematography and to add on to that Christopher Columbus's direction is just how connected the camera work is in Chamber of Secrets. The cinematography of Sorcerer's Stone is gorgeous. I absolutely love the camera work in Sorcerer's Stone, but I really have to give credit to Roger Pratt here for giving Chamber of Secrets on Christopher Columbus as a direction, a much more kinetic feel, a much more livelier feel of the Wizarding World. I cannot not mention this, and that is John Williams' beautiful musical score in Chamber of Secrets. My god, I'm really happy that John Williams was able to not only score the first two films, but along with Prisoner of Azkaban. John Williams takes his themes and what he did. He put some new additions onto what he already did. I want some very exciting new additions to his score. Something else that I really appreciate about the Chamber of Secrets is that this movie, and it does continue from here on throughout the Harry Potter film franchise, and that is the darker tone. As the films do go along, the tone goes slightly, I mean just ever so slightly darker, knowing of what's going on in the Chamber of Secrets. I also thought that there was a bit of a nice horror element put in there, especially given that not only the scene with Aragog, but well, when the Basilisk comes in. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets has such an exciting finale, especially when knowing, and by the way, once again, spoiler alert here, not only is the reveal that Tom Marvolo Riddle showing that yes, he is Voldemort, but rather in a memory, but still knowing at that entire time of the finale that Voldemort was seconds away from coming back. That whole reveal of when Tom Riddle put up those words and just went and says, I am Voldemort. Every single time I've seen that sequence, I still think, whoa. When you first see that basilisk, my God. And by the way, really quick, the fact that the basilisk and the close-ups are animatronics. And not to mention it as well, when Harry Potter gets the Sword of Gryffindor and just nails the Basilisk. Wow, it is so satisfying. Before I go on to my cons, I do want to mention some of my favorite sequences of Chamber of Secrets because there are some sequences that, that still blow me away to this day. When it comes down to this first sequence, it is a huge exposition dump, but I love this scene, and that's a scene where Harry and Ron come across a big ass Aragog. The creature design and the animatronics and the effects on Aragog still made me go like, wow to this scene. Not to mention it as well, one of my other favorite sequences in the film where Draco and Harry duel Harry knocking Draco onto his ass. Rick the Sempra! <laughs> so satisfying! Well, that's just fucking great! I do think that Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is a step down from the Sorcerer's Stone. One of my complaints with this movie, and it's really not the movie's fault, but I still can't help but feel this way. While the expansion of the lore of Hogwarts and the overall world is really, really cool, Harry Potter, The Chamber of Secrets, it really is kind of more of the same. It does kind of feel more than anything else like more of the same of what we already got from The Sorcerer's Stone. While the performances are fantastic and they really are truly great, some of the performances at times 
are a little melodramatic. Jason Isaacs is brilliant in this movie as Lucius Malfoy, absolutely. But there are definitely times where he does kind of overcook it at times. And the sequence where Harry and the memory of Tom Riddle Voldemort are talking. The actor portraying Tom Riddle in those sequences is terrific. I gotta mention, I almost forgot to mention that by the way, but there is a moment in the sequence where him and Harry are going back and forth and it goes this. A name I knew wizards everywhere would one day fear to speak when I became the greatest sorcerer in the world. That whole thing and how he did his performance there, it was just a little much if you ask me, just just a little too much in there. Harry Potter the Chamber of Secrets is almost two and a half hours long. There are sequences in this movie where while it's entertaining, sure, the pace does feel like it slows down at a couple of sequences, maybe around the two hour mark, and then you would have had a terrifically paced Harry Potter film. And here we go. So overall, while Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is a step down from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, this movie is still nonetheless a well done sequel and it's a very good sequel that almost borders on being great. All in all, I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets a 3.75 out of 5. While Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets isn't as good as the Sorcerer's Stone, it is still nonetheless a very entertaining sequel and it is a very good sequel. So comment down below and let me know, have you guys seen Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Or even better, what is your favorite scene in Chamber of Secrets? Let me know below. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'm also on Twitch. So if you guys want to follow me on all those social media platforms, all the links and the usernames are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed my review of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. If so, please hit that like button, I'll subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell for the latest review goes live. If you guys want to see my previous two reviews, please click it right there or right there. And of course, until my next review or video goes live, I will see you all next time.